Living your passion is a great idea, okay? It's a great thought. And people confuse that with the idea that it's going to be easy or that it's going to be fun. No, you guys need to realize that no matter what path you take, no matter what route you take, no matter what direction you take in life, there are gonna be days where you do not feel like doing anything. You don't feel like going to work, you don't feel like doing your job. Those days are going to be there no matter what path you take. Well, you know what? I live my passion every day. And you know what? There's still days I don't feel like doing it. And that's the point that you guys need to understand. I have days I hate, you have days you hate, and everybody else on this earth has days they hate. And it's the people who push through those days anyway that end up making it or not, period. And it's gonna be your ability to move past, over, or through those obstacles on a daily basis that are gonna define your success from your failure. They're gonna find the difference that you make in your life. So don't come at me with the idea of, oh, living your passion is all roses and rainbows and unicorns. It's not. Show me, show me what you got. And I'm telling you, some of y'all, you lying to yourself. You say you wanna be great. You say you wanna get to the next level. You say you wanna be dominant on that field. You say you wanna go to the final four. You say you wanna be a national champion. Listen to me, you say you want a promotion. You say you wanna start your own business. But listen to me very closely, you talk too much. Shut up and let's go to work. I need you to grind. Are you hearing me? I need you to grind. Every single opportunity you get, every chance you get, show up. Listen to them, just be consistent. Success is alert to average. Success and average don't have nothing to do with each other. We were meant to go out and be battle tested. We were meant to go out and face first. We were meant to go out and grow over the course of getting our ass day in and day out. Realizing that those kind of beatings are what define you in life. When you open your eyes to a point where you understand the beatings that you take, the no's, the, the hate talk you get from your friends, from your parents, your peers, whenever you tell them, I want to be successful, I want more. Those are the things that ultimately end up defining your life because you come out stronger. Maybe your mama ain't there for you, your daddy ain't there for you. Maybe your teacher don't believe in you and so she's not holding you to greatness because she don't know. But I know something about you. If you're watching this right now and you went to the very end, I know you're great and I dare you to be great. I challenge you to be great. I challenge you to be great in every single thing you do. Mr. Bennett continues, if one cannot arrange that an income of 24 hours shall exactly cover all proper items of expenditure, one does muddle one's whole life indefinitely. We shall never have any more time. We have, and we have always had, all the time there is. Isn't that well said? Let's consider some approaches to managing our time most effectively. The first approach is to ignore the subject altogether. The man says, I've been late all my life. I can't ever seem to get a handle on my time. Heck with it. I'll just struggle along the best I can. That's okay. It's your life, right? You can do with it as you please. But consider what this attitude might be costing you. Here's the second approach. Step down to something easier. Again, that's okay too. A man works for a company, then decides he wants to own one. When he gets that responsibility, comes to work before everyone else, leaves after everyone else, he now says, I would rather work for someone else's company. Hey, again, it's your life. Success is not a stereotype. There isn't just one model. Know clearly what success means to you and be comfortable with the price you pay for it. You might have heard the story of the little girl who complained to her mother that her daddy never had time to play with her. She said, why doesn't my daddy play with me? He comes home from work, goes to the study and work, comes out for dinner, goes back to work again. I want to play with my daddy. So her mother explained to her, your daddy is very busy. He loves you very much and that is why he works so hard. At his office he has so much work to do that he has to bring the rest of it home and finish it here. That is why he can't play with you. The little girl thought for a moment, trying to solve this problem, and came up with the answer. She said, well, why don't they just put him in a slower group? Hey, not a bad idea. Don't throw away other important values in your life just going for one. I went for some things in my life and found out later I had paid too much. If I had known how much they were going to cost, I never would have paid. So that is a consideration. The next 
approach to time management is to work longer and harder. And we all know the dangers there, right? Unless you aren't working at all, then you probably need to work longer and harder. But for some people, if 10 hours won't do it in a day, they work 12. And if 12 won't do, they move it up to 14. Some people even take on two jobs. And there are some very real dangers here, not least of which is health problems that result from not being able to handle the stress. So you've got to be careful with this approach. The last approach I think is the best, and that is to get more out of you. In the time you have assigned to labor, make the hours more valuable. The key is not to work harder, but to work smarter. If you're putting in about eight or 10 hours a day, six days a week, that's about it. You can't work much harder. But remember, it's not the hours you put in that count. It's what you put in the hour. Get more from you to make the investment of time more valuable. And no telling how valuable you can become. We don't lack the capacity. We only lack the ideas and the will and the discipline to carry them out. In considering the subject of time management, remember that a big part of the key for changing is to take it in small steps. Most of us don't make revolutionary change. We change a few degrees at a time. When you get some life momentum rolling, it's not that easy to make all the changes all at once. Hey, you can't whip a U-turn with the Queen Elizabeth II. When that big shift gets moving, they say it takes seven miles just to get it stopped. So when it's really moving, you just have to nudge it a little, nudge it a little, and finally you get it turned. That's a lot like our lives, a few nudges at a time. How many of you know that it's hard building a thriving residual income on a monthly basis? Raise your hands. That's why most people won't say yeah. It's much easier to complain about the economy. It's much easier to complain about our elected officials. It's much easier to talk about the recession. That's much easier to come up with excuses why you can't do it. That's where I was. That's why I set up station for a long time. My mentor said something to me, Mike, wait, I want you to write this down. He said, anybody can complain. He said, if you do what is easy, that's complaining. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. Come on, that's strong medicine. If you do what is easy, complain about your situation, your circumstance. If you do what is easy, stand around and be a volunteer victim like everybody else. If you do what is easy, surrender and give up on your dreams. Come depressed and bitter and angry. Anybody can do that. If you do what is easy, your life be hard. But if you do what is hard, keep coming back again and again and again. If you do what is hard, approaching strangers, talking to people in shopping malls, get up dressed every day, going out prospecting knowing some way, somehow, with a spirit of expectation, somebody's out here looking for an opportunity. You can go outside right now and see some pigeons, but you're out hunting for eagles, and they are not common. And if you do that over and over and over again, somebody's going to show up. Somebody's going to say, I'm the one. Dr. Thurman, I love him so. What a great. He said, there's something in each and every one of them that waits and listens to the voice of the genius in yourself. It will be perhaps the only guide you will ever have. And if you cannot hear it, all of your life, your days will be spent on the ends of stray that somebody else goes. And I submit to you, you invest time and money, go to the airport, fly across the country. I suggest to you, some of you drove here. I suggest to you, you showed up because you said, I'm going to pull my own strings. I'm going to control my own life. Nobody will ever pull my strings again. Give yourselves a round of applause. I want you to write this down, choosing your future. It's a, it's a, it's a, a program that we've created that's designed to put in place for you to work on yourself. A systematic process that changes your mindset. It's possible, it's necessary, it's you, it's hard, it's worth it, it's done. It's six CDs. I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired of shortcasting. I'm tired of 15-year-olds being killed in drive-by shootings. I'm tired of three-year-olds getting shot through a door in our own house plan because we won't talk about life. Somebody has got to have the courage to talk about life that is not just a straight line and everything that just fall into place. And Peter, the great apostle of the New Testament, is warming himself by the fire of the Romans denying Jesus and not just saying I'm not his disciple. He said, I don't even know him. It's a shame, but it's true. And what if Thomas, Thomas, who said, we must go and die with him. Where is he? Where 
is Thomas. Not in the upper room later when Jesus rose from the dead. Where is he at the cross? Because when Jesus left for Jerusalem, Thomas said, look it up, I must go and die with him. But when that dying got real, a lot of people say a lot of stuff until it gets real. For better or for worse, in sickness and in health, to richer and for poor, till you pee on yourself. When it gets worse, don't be so carried away about what people say. Because Thomas, who was ready to die for him, turns up MIA at the cross. I see John. I see Mary. I see the Roman soldiers. Where is Thomas at the cross? No one he doesn't show up in the upper room. Shame. No wonder he is not gathering with the rest of the disciples because they heard him say, I will die with him. And they know he has shrank into the bushes and ran down the path and went over the hill and swam across the creek to get away from death. But what about Judas and his infamous betrayal of Jesus? I was reading a non-canonical book called The Gospel of Judas that has been discovered in the antiquities of history. And in it, it reports the ideology that Judas really wasn't trying to betray Jesus. He was trying to put Jesus in a situation where he would have to overthrow Rome so that the kingdom could come. And he thought that if he got Jesus in an open confrontation with Rome, that Jesus would show his power and rise to power and he would finally take on politics and stop healing sick people. Because I'm tired of you healing sick people. That's not why I'm following you. I'm following you because I want political power. And the trick blew up in his face and he didn't know they were gonna kill him. If he knew they were going to kill him, then why did he hang himself? He hung himself because he got caught in his own web and it cost somebody their life. And some of us have made decisions that cost other people their lives and their careers and their futures. And it's hard to live when you got the masterful plot and the plot goes wrong. Can I go deeper? I want to submit just for your curiosity. It could be possible that had Judas not hung himself, he he could have got to say he could have come and fallen on his knees and said forgive me and I know you don't believe it but I will defend it if Jesus could be dying on the cross and say father forgive them for they know not what they do while they nailed him to the tree then surely surely 